Hello everybody, this is the conversation for the Parde di Domani, the short film in Locarno 2020. And we are with three wonderful directors from different countries, Vladimir, Rene, and Hamza, and I'll let them introduce themselves and their films. Hello, I'm Vladimir Vulevic uh, from Serbia uh, with my film Kako sam povedio lepaki bronz. Hi, my name, I'm Renee um, from the UK uh, with my film, O Black Hole. Uh, hi, I'm Hamza from Pakistan uh, with my film, 1978. First, I want to thank you for the films because um, it's very brave in our days to make films. People don't realize, but it is. <laughs> and um, I have one question, which, because I was trying to find a link uh, between your film, which are, you also each other's film, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, because they're drastically different. So I was trying to find a link and maybe the only link I found, and, and maybe I'm completely crazy, but um, was this idea of how from an intimate story, it becomes a political story and not story, but a, a political, in a sense of human politics and not of politician politics. Um, for example, Mia, to me, Vladimir, when I see you know, your film, of course, I see the story of Mia, but I see because you're using all these other voices of all these people, using other people's voices to tell one person's story. For me, it's like um, the story of a country. It's his story, but it's also the story of a country. Am I completely wrong? <laughs> no, not, not completely. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, the thing is that we didn't, like me personally and like the guys was not, com not at all interested in, in, um, in, in that, like with, with the purpose or like with the, with the focus on that. But it's, it's there, of course, like it's, it's unavoidable, I, I guess. And it's like, um, yeah, like the fact that we mentioned like past times also, like how it was like 50 years ago or 30 years ago, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of obvious that it's, that it's unavoidable. And like, if you, if you, that, that is the thing that we, that we also try to, uh, that's the reason uh, of, of some, some, some technical decisions, like to, to just stay closer to, to the character also, not, not just the, the protagonist, but the, 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 other characters like to just stay close with the camera to not show this this kind of uh, like ruined or fucked up infrastructure all around so i mean it's it's as i said it's kind of un, unavoidable but without any kind of clear interest or like no, state, of course, but that's, statement that's what i mean that's why i meant by this intimacy or personal story who actually you know um sweats of a much larger thing yeah. I'm not saying it's intentionally, and that's what for me is interesting because um, because you're using poetry in the noble sense, not in the corny sense, you know, uh, and yeah. in, with, through cinema to actually tell, not tell, but to actually express and have people feel despair or, or take conscious of things. Like Renée is the same thing, even though it's a constructed character because it's it, she doesn't exist but using you know like a poem to actually you know grasp the the destruction of nature and, and the rebirth of nature and you know and it's how instead of using a very frontal position discourse you you know switch it to the side to actually express something else that was the link i found in all the films that as you saw each other films, maybe you can react <laughs> also. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's it's uh, the best question for uh, Hamza, maybe. Because I mean, it's also, yeah, because Hamza, okay, forget, forgive my, uh, I think there are things that I miss in the film, probably because I, of my ignorance of mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan history, you know. So there are things I know I can, I can understand and feel and, uh, but I know there are things that I'm missing which is mm -hmm. why I didn't, you know. um, so maybe you can, you know. I mean, I opted less for a poem and more for like a hammer. 
Uh, yeah. in, but poems can be hammers. They yeah. usually are. <laughs> no, no, I agree. <laughs> but uh, I think it also like depends on who the audience is. And as you were saying, uh, you know, some of the stuff possibly for the the climate, if you're not familiar with the history, it, it can be difficult to potentially understand. Um, but I mean, this is also a film that I really want people locally to watch because yeah. it's a local history that people in Pakistan do not talk about um, mm. because it was a time where the country changed and it changed rapidly. And uh, we're living with the consequences of that change today. Uh, and that's what I like about cinema. You know, you can, uh, you can use it to try and create some kind of social change if cinema can do that, you know? Maybe. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. And René? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I was thinking about what you said about sort of not confronting an issue head on, but, but mm -hmm. coming from the side. I guess that's what, um, I think that's, as an animator, that's one of my interests because you know, it, they're the characters who are, uh, they're not real people and they don't emote in, in the same way as, as people. Uh, so it's sort of using elements like uh, like landscape, like sound, and like like music or poetry to try to convey what it is that um, I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm really interested in the use of poetry in or in uh, in, in film. I think because uh, I'm in animation, I'm sort of uh, frightened by all the possibilities that. You know, you can do any. You can do anything. Um, and so, to sort of limit myself, I say, okay, this has to rhyme, or this has to, um, you know, be set to music in a certain way, which is sort of an art artificial like constraint that I put on myself to um, just just to 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 make um, to make the film. And I think, yeah, uh, communicating in that different meter, I think. Um, I think it makes it maybe it makes the film harder to understand, um, but also maybe makes it more interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure. The long silence. Okay, so you don't want to talk about each other's film. Fine. <laughs> right. I I really enjoyed your film, Renee. I thought it was really beautiful, and there was definitely aspects that I don't think I understood, but. The, the thing that I appreciate about it was like, you could enjoy it regardless. You know, if you're not connecting emotionally, it's visually so beautiful. You're talking about all the possibilities. There was like four different animation styles in your film. So you really, uh, it, it, was, it was a really enjoyable experience. Thank you, thank you very much. I, oh, I, um, yeah, I really enjoyed your film as well. I feel, I feel like I really, like, although like Vladimir said, I didn't completely understand the, the the context or in the history of the film, I, I still felt like I really um, was feeling the characters and feeling their what it what it was that they wanted to express. Yeah, I'm but sorry, Vladimir, I was so sad after your film. Like yours was a very different experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, I will take that as a compliment. But it, uh, it, it is meant completely as a compliment. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm kidding, but uh, but uh, about uh, this part about understanding, I really think that it's uh, that it's uh, it's it's not about that at all. I mean, it's it's, exactly. uh, <laughs> it's just like uh, sometimes it's even it's even better when you when you just not don't get anything. I mean, it's it's not that it's it's more like about feelings, I guess. Like in a in a, not just in the movies, like but yeah, just to to this this pressure to to like this modern pressure to understand everything to ch to check it out to like to get it to to just like to rationalize it it's kind of uh, yeah it's kind of uh, it's not just the 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 seed the how do you say the the target it's uh, more like mostly it's even a it's stand on your way to feel things or like to to just like to really get things, not to understand them, I guess. No, I agree. And I think if you don't feel things, then you're not going to try and understand things, you know? So like that emotion of what movies can do is part of the reason I 
love our jobs, you know, because we can try and create emotion. And I think if you're connected to the story, then only then can it even make a semblance of a difference if it's going to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. Um, I, so I'm at, I, uh, I made this film at the National Film and Television School. Uh, and, and for a year and a half, all I heard was, I mean, it's, a very, it's quite a traditional sort of narrative uh, school. So I, all I heard for, for two years was, we don't, we don't get it and like clarify, you know, clarify more, um, which was, I mean, I still managed to make a, a mess of a film, but um, I definitely felt that pressure to add some context, which is why um, we added the voiceover in at the beginning. Uh, which sort of tries to set up the the premise, the idea that um, you know that that like nothing can that this is a woman who who did what she did because she didn't want things to change and um, and didn't want anyone to leave her. So that was like sort of the central idea that I wanted to communicate in the film. So we just put it in the voiceover, <laughs> um, which I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I um, I was really hesitant to use voiceover uh, in the beginning. It always, you know, it always feels like uh, an easy thing to do, but, but at the same time, it can be really interesting and really complicated. Um, I was really interested in your use of voiceover, Vladimir, um, and the different, the different people who are speaking and also the different, you know, like the different, it seemed like they were on different modes of speaking as well. So I was wondering if you could talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just uh, interested in, in um, like, um, how do you say, like the, the testimonies of, of different kind of people about the character who is not speaking. I mean, that was the decision from the beginning because uh, I was really directly inspired, let's say, by, but, uh, by um, this area where I grew up. I mean, I, I, I'm not living there more than 50 years now, but but I grow up there and um, I, I pay a visit uh, time to time and uh, people down there don't talk so much actually. And uh, they, 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 when they talk, they kind of, uh, yeah, they, so sometimes they, they don't even say hello to each other. And it, it's like from this kind of distance, it, it looks very like, uh, I don't take it as, as, as it is, but I, I kind of think about it. When I was there, I didn't even think about it. So yeah, I just decided to not have dialogue, not just because of that, but mostly because of that. And then, yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, wondering uh, how it can look like if some people talking about some people, well, in this case, uh, the, the, main, the main protagonist, while he's there, while he's, he's in front of us. And uh, yeah, and I was, uh, I was uh, I had a lot of fun to to have this kind of testimonies which can be um, that, that I can rely on. I mean, like uh, they they just talk about uh, the the guy who they like they are really close to him, like his sister or his neighbor or whatever. But then uh, then we can see the things that that he's doing, what they not even mention or even that they. Like, I don't know, for example, his sister said, like, he's not drinking anymore, but we can see him that he's drinking. So uh, I was just interested in that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, uh, moments, like when we, when we, yeah, when we can ask ourselves, is there, what, what is, what is actually true? What is, what is real in terms of like, is, is he lying or she's she lying or, or what is, uh, or is anybody lying at all? Maybe, maybe they're just like, like uh, that kind of thing. I, I mean, I, I just had a strong decision to not have dialogues, except except they are not like necessary. Like when he come in neighbor's flat, he need to say something, and it's kind of it's mm -hmm. kind of uh, I guess uh, normal or whatever. But uh, but mostly, like I said, people don't talk so much over there, and so I was this, this like inspired by that directly. And yes, uh, Valerie is, 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 is uh, right in a way that, uh, that they, they, it's written and it's kind of um, acted or like um, re read it as a, not, not poetry, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a melody of, of this dialect and so socialicat of, of, uh, of that area also. It's like, it's like uh, 
more it's more about uh, yeah i guess that it's a uh, that's that it's a lot of a uh, lot of it lost in the translation as 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 always but uh but this melody of 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 this dialect over there is captured i think and i'm 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 glad <laughs> but there's also something incredible which is how the perception of one person no matter how intimate you are with um is not wrong it's just if i mean a person is it's exactly what i wanted to say actually yeah and that's what's really incredibly moving to me at least in the film is that you have this man doing his everyday routine and his body was quite um charged with it's heavy like he's carrying the world on his shoulder um and then you have all these different perception from different relation and ten of tenderness of of um uh, routine you know and that's that's what to me makes it from extremely intimate to universal you know? i guess so <laughs> okay now i have a question for all of you um what's your relation to cinema for real like why why cinema and what this tool brings to you know to um to the way you do things to the way you relate to the world to the way you are in the world oh sounds <laughs> right you uh, <laughs> i i think my relationship to cinema changed a lot during corona actually because uh before covid i would probably watch a film like once a week and then during during covid um i started watching like a film every night you know and i was like trapped in my house and this was like a ritual then where i was able to escape so i think in this like last 3 months i feel like i rediscovered what films could be uh and kind of how it can be a way to connect beyond borders beyond languages um and that's the beauty of it cuz like i've grown up between canada and pakistan so i've seen how a lot of you know the idea that people are so different is just bullshit you know people are the exact same everywhere you have extremists sitting in toronto you have extremists sitting in pakistan you know um and you have good people on both ends so i think for me cinema is a way to hopefully come closer to and to to help you know show that the human condition is universal it's that's why i i like it and despite there being you know uh it's not the greatest economic prospect why i continue to persevere um, <laughs> um i i i um i agree i think about cinema being about connecting um for me i guess why i make films is um i started as a painter uh and very shy painter and um yeah i don't know I, i have trouble expressing myself clearly or or in in a interesting way in person but i guess through through films it's like i see it as a way to 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 communicate with people to so that they understand me better and when i watch films i feel like i understand the the people who make them in some like intimate in some intimate way um which is why it, it's uh appealing to me as well despite uh the economic um troubles <laughs> um i mean uh like to be honest it's uh, like my connection with cinema is pretty um not pretty but let's say random in terms that i um <clears throat> i study uh, literature in in belgrade and then when i when i finished my studies i was uh, yeah just like being around like um, i didn't know what to do with myself and then i i actually uh, my idea is uh, was like for for i think years ago to actually i come to germany like uh, following the uh, path of love let's say it like that and um, in that path i uh, with the, with a lot of help of my uh, uh, my friend and and also film director Luka Papić who is director of photography in in uh, in this this film 
uh, with his help, uh, I, I met Angela Shananek. Uh, well, he he had a class. He still have a class, film class in uh, in Hamburg, in Heidelberg uh, Hamburg School. And uh, yeah, I I met her, and uh, uh, she accepted me in uh, from some reason. She accepted me in uh, in, um, in in her class in, in Hamburg. So. Yeah, that's the that's that's moment when I actually bite it really hard and and uh, now I'm I'm completely into it and uh, it's like I, I I felt like that I missed so much because I was not in in films I mean I watched the movies uh, uh, here and there before but but uh, yeah like now I'm uh, I'm pretty much into it and uh, it's uh, it means uh, it means to me a lot and. Uh, and yeah, now I'm in this uh, trying to 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 make up to me all this uh, all these movies around and uh, like I watch them maniacally now and and yeah I I, I can say that uh, Angela Shanelek and and Luca Papic introduced me for for the cinema and uh, before that I I was kind of okay with it I I didn't I wasn't I was more in literature which is which is I guess a, a bit obvious in in, in uh, in this film as well, but uh, yeah, now now I'm now I'm uh, here I am. <laughs> so you all uh, mentioned how you know the very uh, shyly the difficulty of producing films, very politely, <laughs> I should say. Um, so you're all from different you know parts of the world different countries and I was wondering if um, around you you see you know new ways of producing like uh, collectives of filmmakers or you know or if it's still the same struggle of and the same fights of who's going to get the subvention and you know and as you're young all of you like um, are you also thinking of how to invent new ways of producing your work? Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's always you, the hard question, the first. If, I, if my questions are boring, you can ask questions too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I don't know, that's an interesting, um, it's interesting, it's true, yeah. Pro producing films is very, it's very difficult, <laughs> I've found. Um, I, I don't know of any, I, I personally am, am looking for, I'm searching for new ways of making films. Um, I'm one of those is live action, which I'm, I think is going to be my next endeavor. Um, I because mostly I would like to see the sun and the outside uh, world, uh, and and people. So because animation is very lonely and um, dark existence <laughs> I'm, I'm finding I'm thinking so yeah I think it's important it's in, and that is something I'm seeking out is collectives and, and groups so if you know of any in London um, please let me know in London I don't know in Spain there's plenty in Portugal yeah. there's a few in France there are a few so I was wondering you know in Germany or in Pakistan or in Cambodge I know there's a really big collective of young filmmakers that are producing a lot of films so I was wondering you know I, I know someone in London who's part of a collective, so uh, I, I would be happy to, uh, you know, connect there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Pakistan is like, it's, it's kind of lonely also because uh, there's, there's, there is a documentary association collective where they work quite closely, which is great. Um, but I found the process here to be like in a way kind of similar um, to my experience in Toronto where you just, you keep doing work and then you slowly find your people. And uh, you know, then once you found them, you just really hold on tight and <laughs> you uh, don't let go, you know? And that's kind of what I've been doing for the last six years. And we've all been growing together, which is exciting. Um, yeah, I, I would love to meet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd love to be put in touch. But that, but that wasn't really, I mean, my question was really like, is it something, for example, I started, I made my film, I was, my first film, I was old already. 
and I really didn't want to deal with, you know, you before you mentioned the, you know, the how people need to understand and you always have somebody to using that horrible word called efficiency, uh, understanding the narrative and, you know, you're going to lose people, blah, blah, blah. So I, I didn't, I was all, I was too old to hear this bullshit and to have to deal with it because I really don't believe, I believe in emotion and the construction of emotion that makes, that will make you think eventually if you still have a brain. <laughs> uh, but the first is the the physical emotion. I, I truly believe that what cinema is. So I was, you know, I started my own little company because I didn't want to have to deal with any of this um, horrible <laughs> um, thought over the work. So that's why I was thinking because you're 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 starting. It's you know, and if you're thinking to me, there's no difference between imagining a thing, a film, writing it, uh, and going to buy the props. I mean, the whole process. I think today, because of the way the world is and the way the economy of the world is, and you have to think of the whole. There's no difference between production and creation. There, there must be a, a consciousness of, yeah, you, if there is snow in your film, you shoot it in winter. You don't shoot it in summer and have millions of euros. It's a, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm, I was asking, like, how, how do you, you know, think your work really and how to make your work? Does it make sense what I'm saying? Or? Yeah, it, it makes. I mean, for me, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm really still on the beginning. I, I participate myself in. Uh, not participate. How they say? Um, um, I see myself on that way, and uh, for me, the 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 most beautiful thing that it happened uh, uh, while shooting and making this film is that I that I find my found my uh, my. Uh, my co collaborators, or or how do you say, like my my pals, and um, I mean I'm I'm really I'm really happy with them, and I, I think that they are fine with me also, and yeah, it's it's uh, for me if, uh, for in this moment it's it's more uh, it's 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 biggest problem how to actually find the money and how to get them even even when you find them, but. Uh, but uh, this other part is really like uh, I, I, I can say only on, on this example because it's my first first film and, and it's my first experience uh, uh, in in, in, a, in a, that kind of frame like with the money with the with the people that we paid and, and etc. So uh, it was really like uh, because it's small crew because it's uh, because they are friends and, and etc. It goes really nice and slow and not slow but smooth and slow. And uh, yeah, I didn't like, I don't know what to say more about it. I mean, I, I would really like, um, I would really like to, to not be so involved in this uh, produce, producer kind of things. And uh, we, we, we have uh, Sergio Vucho, our friend who, who is uh, dealing with, uh, with the, such a things. But yeah, for me, this, this kind of like uh, setting works like small group, Natural light, um, friends, paid friends. It can work, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm I'm on, on the beginning. I, I'm repeating. So. No, nobody's wrong. It's just it's just how you you know. Yeah, exactly. How you yeah. relate to your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And How you want to construct it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, like I, I've been through that with my earlier work as well, where it was friends and, you know, no one was getting paid. I mean, for my first short film, the thing that really helped me was Kickstarter, uh, just because uh, I, I didn't go to film school. I come from a theater background. So a lot of my learning was just by making films and experimenting. And then I got all my theater friends and we tried to make a movie and it was terrible, but we tried. Um, and uh, stuff like Kickstarter just really made it a lot more equitable because it allowed me to raise financing outside of the, like the country that I'm in because people 
uh, it, it, in Pakistan, you also have to build an audience for this kind of cinema because A, we don't really have theaters. Um, we don't really have a rich cinema culture. We have a very vibrant culture of banning films, but not so much of uh, watching them. So, uh, you know, like I do think when you're starting out, like the people, your friends, the people who make your films are the, the best people, you know, and if I'm happy you're having that experience. I recently had to get lights and it was a nightmare and make my team very large and on this film. And it was the most challenging thing I've ever had to do. It sounds, it sounds really, how, how do you build an audience um, like that? Uh, like we do a lot of community screenings. So like uh, with, like we'll go into universities and we'll put up posters and uh, we'll work with local organizations to get the word out, you know? And it's like, I mean, the turnout's not great, but at least it's some people you know, um, and then through word of mouth, you know, you kind of start to get your ambassadors mm -hmm. and then those people tell their friends. So it is, it is very much like a grassroots approach. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time, but it's working. There's more interest slowly, slowly. Uh, but, you know, it's always nice to be in a place where everything, I mean, it has its drawbacks, but it's also kind of nice to be at part of that initial growth, you know? that's exciting in its own way, where there isn't that European structure of, you know, this is how we do cinema and, you know, this is where you put the camera and we're gonna get those millions of euros of fake snow. You know, we don't have that option. We are shooting on location always. Um, but there's, there's beauty in that and it makes it, you know, interesting. Yeah, that sounds so exciting to, I mean, even if like, if people watch your film and they've never even, considered making films this way or, or, you know, yeah, that sounds really inspiring. I mean, whenever anybody sees my films in Pakistan, they always think they're documentaries. And I need to be like, no, this is not a documentary. That is another art form because, you know, over here, uh, if you're familiar with Bollywood, you know, films are very different. You know, like there's a big music, big dance, thousands of backup dancers, you know, like that's kind of what is a film that is cinema, you know? So, telling films that like, for example, Vladimir, your film, um, it's a very different language. And if people here to watch it, they'd be like, oh, this is a great documentary, you know? And uh, even though your film does kind of blur those lines. Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe I, because I think I, I screwed up and maybe now this, what we're gonna do now can go higher in the conversation because we went to, um i wanted to ask all of you what was two question to talk a little bit about the desire of this film that you made and that we're talking about not really and then the second uh would be what is the most important thing for you um, towards the people you're filming, whether they're character or actors, not actors, doesn't matter. Like what's the most important thing for you? Uh, yeah, this, this second one, I mean, I, I was really interested in, interested in people in, uh, in this film. Like that's, that's really the reason that I, that I pick up the, the, the crew that everybody can like I when I when I decide to ask Luka Papic to to uh, do a camera I didn't want to I, I believed him from 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 the beginning and uh, even before that uh, based on his movies and, and uh, something that we worked together before this movie so I, I just uh, didn't think about it anymore so I was just like trying to make a crew that everybody do their things and that I can be completely uh completely unloaded with the, with that kind of things and to be uh, like with with the people like with the with the actress let's say because uh, none of them i mean they are not they are not like uh, acting on alphabets they are like study acting a bit and like doing in amateur theaters but nobody is actually the, the actor so uh, uh it was a uh, it was a really challenging for me it was the first time that i worked with the with the more than one or two actors let's call them like that so it was it was really interesting and intensive for me because uh, 
especially with the with the child. I, I worked first time also with the with the child, and uh, uh, you probably know the best, Valerie. But uh, but uh, it's it's very different kind of uh, not approach. Not, it's not approach. A different kind of relationship uh, from from the beginning. So. Yeah, I was uh, quite uh, not afraid, but I was uh, suspicious about it. And uh, but when when we start, I actually realized that that it's it's a quite tricky because uh, with the with the children you can rehearse uh, endlessly because they they lost interest. They just like they like to play, they like to be challenged and to do to do uh, concrete things. But after one or two uh, times doing that, they lost interest and they're getting bo bored and it's, it's visible, of course. And so, uh, yeah, we tried to, to try to not do, do that. We did with, the, with, the, with the, this girl, we did only like one day rehearsals, kind of just to introduce the, 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 the things that she, she should do. Uh, and with the, with others, it was it was completely different with the, uh, everybody. This uh, this old uh, old uh, old man that that was uh, the first voice voiceover is a uh, is a Serbian poet who is uh, who is uh, in, in in his manner who is like reading and saying things like uh, like uh, Shakespeare's character like uh, with uh, with a lot of pathos and. Uh, and with the tears in his eyes, so we need to to like to change it and to, to reduce it and to to. So I, I mostly I, I worked with the with the people and I I really like it. I really liked it and uh, it was quite challenging. I was uh, th there was a lot of frustration also with the main character. He's he's my friend from childhood, but uh, I didn't spend time with him for fifteen years or something. So we had some like. Uh, days let's say but uh, but we go completely different paths and so i need to get him before i start working with him and he was really fast and uh, like uh, like um, uh, kind of hectic guy that i need to put him down for, for weeks and very actually the, at the end we lived together even because he was yeah i can i, I couldn't have him all all the time around because he is not uh, he's a uh, free spirit let's say it like that so yeah it was uh, for me it was more mostly about that and of course then the camera we we discuss also in real time and and uh, after every shooting day look and i talk about it as well but he really knew what i what i wanted because everything was in the script like uh, it was a very precise let's say script and uh, it was uh, kind of not so problematic to shoot it and to edit it afterwards so that's yeah for me more or less it uh sorry what was the question again the first one was what's the <laughs> sorry, Hansa. where does the desire of the film you made came from okay. or the need if okay. not desire or the mix of need and desire um and the second is what's the most important um in the relation to what you do to the people you film and and the work you know what's the most important thing for for me I, okay i'll be more precise for me for example i understood after i made my first film nana i i finished editing because i edited alone and i finished at three in the morning and i remember very precisely going in the street and i felt like i was not touching the ground <laughs> i was like flying <laughs> And I started talking to myself out loud because I was in the street, so nobody could tell me I was crazy. And the only thing I could say was, I didn't betray her, I didn't betray her, which is, which has become the most, even though they're people, but in the films they become characters. But to me, it's extremely important not to betray them. So if you ask me the question I'm asking you, that would be my answer <laughs> okay. to make it a little clearer. Uh, I think the idea for this film came from, it feels like right now where the society is revisiting that era and things are again changing very quickly and uh, a lot of freedoms that were there are rapidly changing. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a desire to, you know, like revisit history before we really repeat mistakes that were made um because it felt like we were we're living in that history right now and it's it's happening in front of us 
because things in society here are very much always quite volatile, but there's been some big changes that have happened recently. And uh, that's really kind of where the burning desire came from because when it's not possible to say things in the present, sometimes history can be a portal to say things that you cannot otherwise say. Um, I hope that is clear. I'm trying, to be, I'm trying to be as clear as I can be. Um, and uh, in terms of the film, uh, like, I guess what, I don't know, like for me, film is like, I, so because in theater, when you're making stuff, you really become a family because you have these long rehearsal processes and you're together for six months and you end up just really loving everyone that you work with. And it's so special when you're working on projects like ours, because, you know, these are not projects that getting them finance is a complete, you know, like extreme difficulty, extreme challenge. And just getting these projects off the ground is so special and so rare um, that for me, I want everyone who's on set to feel like they're a part of that, to try and create that semblance of family, you know, with the people who you're collaborating with, which is why I like collaborating with the same people again and again, because then you have that camaraderie. Uh, and with this film, my leads are both not actors, and it's specifically about the Goan Christian community of Pakistan who have never been captured in cinema before. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to, you know, get people from the community. So I visited churches. I like went for Sunday service and was announcing auditions and was really just trying to convince people to come and be in this film. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of auditions. And then the character of Thomas, who's the younger brother, he is from the Goan Christian community. And so is my producer. Uh, so through them, we were able to get a lot of access. And it was really interesting because Sherwin, he doesn't want to act. He's very shy. He's very introverted. Uh, and just getting him in this project. And this was his first project ever. And it was really exciting because now he's only, I think he's 15 or 16. And now he's like, oh yeah, oh, this is interesting. You know, like I could do this. So it's been to be able to do something like that within the thing that is our job is very special to me. And it's something I try and recreate with every project I do. And Rene? Um, for me, the most, the, the idea, the desire to make the film came from uh, my, I guess, my own, ex like, fear, like, worries, uh, thoughts about, um, you know, that all things will end and, and everything will change and, and um, nothing will ever be the same again. Uh, so I kind of made this film about a woman who uh, thinks all these things and then is convinced that she's wrong uh, in the hopes that it would also convince me that I'm wrong. Um, I'm not really, I mean, I, it's, uh, it has, I mean, it's still, these things are still true, so it didn't really work. But, um, but yeah, I guess I, I always make films about things that I'm afraid of um, as a way of confronting these fears. Um, in, my, in my last film, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm really afraid of, of little holes, like little, lots of little holes together. I guess this is a black, large black hole, but yeah, so I've just been, I was just drawing a lot of things with, yeah, just as a exposing myself to these things. Um, yeah, so that's, I think that's where my films come from is fear and confronting fear. Um, this was the first, film first project where I worked with a large a largish crew uh, before this my credits had two people in them um, and this time there's, there's like suddenly there's 50 uh, so that was a big a big leap for me and and yeah like I, I was so uh, concerned with the idea that everybody had to be having fun working on it um, I was, you know, which was something that, that was something that was really important to me that everybody in the crew liked the film and or, or, you know, that the film meant something to them. And it was really exciting when it became their film as well. And maybe it meant something different to them than it did to me. And that was, that was great as well. Um, 
and yeah it's it's very it's it was it was it's fun it's fun to work with people to work together and you know most i'm i'm gonna be working with these people forever i, I hope <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you have what's next for all of you? Are you already working on something or not? Um, yeah, I'm. I uh, guess uh, I've been using the. I mean, this has been a great time to write. Sort sort of hard time to write, but also good time to write. Um, so I'm working on a few a couple of things. One is. Um, uh, a live action horror film about a, um, a an Asian American girl growing up in Texas uh, in an orchestra um, with because with Oh Black Hole I just went big I went like big ideas the universe and now it, here I decide and then now I think I need to bring it back in to something uh, smaller and more intimate and honest and scarier which is about my family. <laughs> But with people or with animation? With people. With people. people. <laughs> so now you're confronting another fear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I guess because I guess because films take up so much time, I feel like, you know, I, I in some way I should grow from from making them, from the experience of making them. Change and grow and mm. and you Amza. Uh, I am waiting for a vaccine or like something to come along. Uh, Cause we're, uh, we, were, we were gonna shoot another short film right before COVID hit. Uh, so now I'm just waiting and working on the script. And in this one, um, it's about uh, the relationship between a uh, autistic teenager and his older brother and uh, kind of that sibling bond. So we've casted a teenager who's on the spectrum so I always say I'm going to make my next film that, you know, easier and then it never is. So um, this one's going to be interesting. We've been doing Zoom rehearsals mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's been interesting. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, I'm actually trying to rewrite the script so no one is ever in each other's six feet space right now. So that's a, a fun new thing to come up with. And then I'm also, uh, we're raising financing from... Vladimir, because I think Amza um, has... Yeah, like, he, he mentioned electricity, yeah. I hope he's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm writing a script with, uh, with uh, Luka Papic, the film director from Serbia, who, who was the director of photography in, uh, in my film. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a script for his uh, future film and it's about people and horses, let's put it like that. And it's the first time that I actually writing with somebody and uh, it's really possible. <laughs> I mean, it's possible with him. It's, it's, uh, it's really possible and really, I really like it, yeah. <clears throat> we are kind of finishing firsthand and then let's see, but yeah, all this Corona time we actually did that, so. Yeah, and it's a short or long feature? It's a long, yeah. Really nice to meet you guys, even like this. But yeah, maybe somewhere, sometime in person also. I hope Locarno next year. Hopefully, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, Valerie, now. Yes, it was really. Thank you very much because it's uh, for me. It's it's my first Zoom, I must say, and it's something so and human but it strangely enough it became a little human so <laughs> thanks to you because of what you said and all the things you talked about and uh, i think it was very beautiful Rene, you touched me very much with your um shyness that is very beautiful hamza it's such bravery to make films in pakistan with those conditions and keep on and i wish you lots of love and strength and Vladimir, same, even though you're in a fancy country like Hamburg, <laughs> uh, Germany. Uh, and I hope we meet for real one day, Juana, instead of through a screen. Oh, so too, yeah. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks yeah, to thank you, Valerie. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>